What's up, guys? It's Football Thanasi. I did my whole first take in one take, and then I looked at my microphone and it was muted. <laughs> so, we're going to try this again. Today was match day 14, uh, sorry, 15, and this is going to be part one. And today, I'm just going to do a rapid review. I'm not going to do any tactical stuff because I got work, I got classes. I got too much stuff going on for all this fixture congestion. When the fixture congestion slows down, then I'll be making some more um, interactive content and more tactical recaps. Because I love those. So, let's get right into it. The first game today was Apollon Smyrnis versus Panathinaikos. And these are two of my favorite teams to watch. To be honest, um, Apollon. Okay, yeah. By the way, I'm just reading my notes. I took notes the whole time. This is gonna be a little crazy, but we'll get through it, and it'll work. It it worked on the first take. It'll work on the second take. And yeah, my microphone is not muted, so we're good. Okay, so the first thing I notice, Apollon's keeper was a little poor. He just doesn't seem like a professional keeper. He seems uh, a little big. Anyway, we'll move past that. You all need this for Panathinaikos. Gets a nice goal in the first half. He's looking good. He's big and he has nice feet and he plays on the right. He was playing on the right wing today, but I think he's a striker. And bad news for Apollon Smirnis. Nikos Ioannidis goes off with a neck brace, which is really tough to see. Uh, I really like this guy. He apparently was good in his youth and uh, kind of floated around Europe, didn't really pan out. And now he's kind of having a little career resurgence at 26 years old at Smyrny. So that's great to see. Silulis draws a penalty from the inexperience of Zagaritis. And then. VAR checks it for like five minutes. They decide it's outside the box and they give Zagaritis his second yellow. And he's off. What is the point of yellow cards? Okay, yellow cards, so I, this, this makes, you can make sense out of this, right? Like, a yellow card is to make sure the defense isn't just fouling everyone and stopping every attack. Like, there needs to be some kind of punishment to make it not worth it to just stall every attack with a yellow card. So, if it's a penalty, you don't get a yellow card, but if it's a free kick, you do get a yellow card. Is that that must be the logic they're thinking? Because initially he didn't have he didn't give a yellow card, and Zagadetis goes off, free kick free kick amounts to nothing. But Panathinaikos is playing with uh, down a man, so. Hatsi Yovanis was coming back and playing kind of like right wing back. He was playing great defense. He was covering. He was working. Ioannidis for Panathinaikos had a really nice move that resulted in a corner. It was beautiful. He's looking good. He's uh, looking agile and strong, and he's looking cool. Spinanis gets their goal across from Mounier to Thomas Bettinelli, the captain, clutching up. And... Another five-minute VAR check. And he's off size by two millimeters. And that begs the question, what is the point of VAR? What was the initial point of VAR? Because what we all thought it was going to be is not what it is. Um, I mean, the same thing happens in England. So, I'm sure you all agree with me on that. Slivka had a chance in the end, but Apollon loses... 1-0 to Panathinaikos. And because of their win against Yanina, they're in an okay position, but their real loss today was Ioannidis. I had to, for me, he was like one of their best players. He's so consistent. To have a consistent striker is, is crazy. And over the season, he's been playing so well. And it sucks to see him go off. I really hope he's okay. You, you hate to see an injury of any type, but I've just... I really... Just really noticed this guy playing and really enjoyed him. Um, 
since the beginning of this season. Uh, so the next game was Ayak versus Panatolikos. Back to the keeper. Christopher Nett was Panatolikos' keeper. Oh, I just noticed his name is Nett. K-N-E-T-T. K-N-E-T-T. The guy's name is Nett, and he's a keeper. Maybe that's why he's the keeper. Because he doesn't look like a keeper. He does not look like a professional keeper. He's huge. He's not... He just he just looks like... Uh, like... I don't know. Just not a soccer player. When you think of great keepers, you think of Courtois, Jan Oblak, Ter Stegen, Neuer. They're long. They're, they're like, not big, but they're kind of big. But they can move, right? They're like they're the right size to be able to move with that kind of frame. And this guy's just huge. He just doesn't just doesn't look like a pro soccer player. Anyway, Mandalas is moving around. He's kind kind of like a Mazala from the middle, but he ends up uh, on the left side a lot. But uh, Mantatis involved in the attack of Anatoly Kos a lot, looking good. He, their, their attacks aren't really getting anywhere. Ayak is kind of dominating the game, but their attacks are so toothless. Until the 41st minute, they had a delicious goal. Bacasetas, so, ooh, not Bacasetas, heck no. Bakaikis plays it across on the ground, and Mandolas is on the end of it, and he just has a clever little tap back across. To Galanopoulos, who was, just has an open net. Easiest goal of his life. Puts it away, and gosh, that's good to see him score. He loved it. He was really happy to score. And it's good to see Bakaikis doing something, and it's great to see Mandalos getting those assists. And this... So, here's the problem with Panatolikos on that goal. Net, the keeper, just got sent... For a freaking Euro outside the stadium by Mandolos. The guy, he, 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 the, way, the way he moved across the box and then gets just completely bamboozled by Mandolos. And he just goes off, like, the, the net is completely open. This guy is behind the goal, stumbling. And he just looked like, he, I mean, he got thrown by Mandolos. A, a better keeper, I think, would have done better there. I think it was still a goal anyway. But. What was the Panatolikos back line doing? Their back line was so far from their keeper in that position that Mandalos had enough space to get in behind, and so did Kalanopoulos, and neither of them got covered. It wasn't great defending for them on the, in that particular part of the game. Oliveira can be disappointing at times, just not lethal. He looks like a good soccer player, good football player. Not a good striker at times. Same thing in Europe. Too many touches. Too much Too much daily dang in, in front of the goal. Your striker, you put that thing away. You put it in the back of the net. That's what you do. You don't uh, mess around. Simoš uh, looks like a quality player. And this is what I think about the keepers. I didn't say... I, I'm going to say something about the view of these two because... This guy, he has... The attitude of like a number ten that's too good for his league, and he's just he sh like it is not the attitude that a keeper has. It's not the it's like he doesn't seem like a keeper. It, he's very sh he's very weird. I don't know. I don't know what I think about him. But Net Christopher Net. Keeper for Panatolikos. Looks like they found him at an office. Berhus, the keeper for Apollon Smunis. Looks like they picked him up at a pub. And the Udis looks like he cuts hair. So that's what I think about the three keepers today. Obviously, I love them. They play, they play in the Greek League. I love to watch them. They're just poking fun. <coughs> Next game. Well, that game ended in 1-0, by the way. Next game. Isle versus Pazianina. It was unavailable. Because of this dang Nova Sport world. And I don't know why, but I couldn't watch it. I, I like Pazjanina. I like IL. And it's almost a good thing I didn't watch it because it ended 0-0. So maybe it was an entertaining game. 
Probably not. <laughs> They're both at the bottom of the table. Pazianina having a much better season than IL. IL is probably going to go back to last place from second place because they La Mia has two games in hand on them. So I think they're probably both tired. They both had tough games. Pazianina had a loss to Apollon, and that was a tough game. IL had a tie to Pauk, which was a very tough game for them. They did very well, and they just, just because the keeping, the big slow Nagi keeper, just comes out and trips Svidersky. Terrible. They had it. And he, okay. Anyway, moving on. In this game, IL versus Pasianina. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming they're both a little tired. Mm, I think uh, Pasianina's good players came off around the 70th minute. Elefteriadis, Pamelidis. And, well, they shared the points, so not terrible. Not terrible for either of them. They, they both got a point out of it. Next game. Probably the game that was the most entertaining today. Just because of some of the bangers that were put in. Asteras versus Olympiacos. So I liked Olympiacos' lineup. I would like to see Fortuny start. But we can always get what we want. I also liked Asteras. I would like to see them finish better than they did against Panathinaikos. Last match day uh, on Sunday. Today, they did not look like the same team against Panathinaikos. I think it's because their midfield was just not as strong as Olymp not even close to Olympiakos' midfield. But against Panathinaikos, like I was saying, they were de decisive. They knew what they wanted to do. They had a, a game plan in mind. And today, they just kind of like, I don't know. They were I guess they were trying to play up to Olympiakos' level. And they made it complicated. It was beautiful at times to watch. But I think it was just a little too complicated. So, I didn't see Barales. He must, I don't know if he's injured or what. Uh, Bruma was playing well. He was combining with Fabuena and Rafinha early on. He had a nice cross in the 11th minute. It, it, it got past the striker, but it was a beautiful cross. It's good to see him playing well. Asteras had a... 4-4-2 in defense, and they had a confrontation line at about half field for one for that se uh, segment of the game. Sito, the guy I was talking about last match day, who was finding all kinds of great space between the Panathinaikos lines, he gets the ball on the counter and burns Semedo. Actually, absolutely burned Semedo. It was great to watch. I don't think it resulted in anything, but... He, this guy looks like a real player. He finds space well. I like him. Kamara loves whipping in that ball from the half space right above the corner. He it, it's it's it would remind some of De Bruyne. It it's it's reminiscent of De Bruyne. <coughs> maybe not reminiscent. Maybe that's the wrong word. But it reminds me of De Bruyne. Smeta was looking sluggish that half. Uh, he gets a yellow in the twentieth minute. Because he's getting burned by these little Asteras players. Vabuena is so agile. Even at 36 years old, he's doing that weird thing where he contorts his body around the ball and uses the outside of his foot to to play it around a player. Like, as a pass. He pass it around an opposition player right into the feet of his teammate. It's He just is so good at finding that little space. And the game starts to get a little heated. Like... Pretty bad. I guess it, there's some yellow cards going around. A lot of players are yelling. You can hear the benches all yelling, and and it calms down. It did calm down right before halftime. But Olympiacos gets a goal. They score from a corner. Semedo gets a header. Valbuena with the assist from the corner. It's been a long time coming. I I haven't seen many set piece goals from Olympiacos, at least like cross and header. The last set piece goal I remember was Fortunis to a couple months ago, a month ago. Um, but it's weird because in the Champions League, Fortunis had a lot of nice service in the box, and Semedo and Cisse with nothing. Nothing. But Semedo finally gets his corner goal. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, so. Then before half, Fabuena gets his second assist. This one is crazy. It's off another corner, but it's I think it's played short to Bob Bunny and he crosses the ball or something like that. 
but it it comes into the into the top of the box, and Madi has this sumptuous dipping volley that it never gets too high off the ground, but it just dips into the bottom right corner back the way it came from, and it is just gorgeous. I mean, it's got to be one of the goals of the goal of the season. It's got to be. I mean, Arabuli just had a nice one. Pina just had a nice one, but this one, oh my gosh. It's even better than the goal he scored in the Champions League against Marseille. Yeah. Um, Masuras had a 1v1 with the keeper. It ended up being off sides, but he's, he couldn't beat the keeper. It's just like, sometimes he's... He doesn't have the end product. Sometimes he... Like, against La Mia he did. <laughs> I don't know. It's just that one against Marseille, he skied over. And every once in a while, I don't know. He just doesn't have the end product that he really needs. So, sometimes I think keepers are way too protected because so Jose Sal literally came out and just punched on a status player in the face. And the player gets called for the foul. Like, I don't... What is the player supposed to do? Not go for the ball? He literally just got punched right in the face by Justin Sal. Why does the keeper need so much protection? Okay, maybe because his hands are going up or something. Because his hands are up and he can't protect his body. But does that actually result in a lot of injuries? I don't know. I don't know. It might. I'm not, I don't make the rules for a reason. But, I mean, when the keeper just comes out and punches someone in the face, it reminds me of the Marseille game... When Mandanda comes out and just bodies El Arabi when El Arabi has a chance to score, doesn't even get the ball at all. Just comes out and just, bo it pissed me off. He just comes out and bodies him and gets through the foul gets called on. El Arabi, when Olympiacos is trying to score to tie the game at the end of the game. So yeah, sometimes I think keepers are protected too much. Uh, at halftime, the teams came off well. Semedo had his arm around Sito, I think. It just, which is funny. He's probably, he's probably saying, "Don't, uh, don't dust me like that again." Asteras was pressing high in the second half. Ba would have gotten a red card if it was a different league. He had this challenge on his end line, and. It was almost like two-footed, and his legs go between the other guy's leg, the Estados guy's legs, and it was kind of a nasty challenge. I feel like in the Premier League that might have been a red card. I don't know though, but he gets a yellow. Ooh, and then got to see Fortunis wrapping his shin guards on. That's always a great sight, isn't it? So we're into the second half. I think Bob gets away with another one. I think he, he had another challenge. Yeah, and he gets away with another one. Doesn't get doesn't get another yellow. And uh, Fortunius ends up coming on for Matthew Valbuena. And Cissé <laughs> on for Semedo. And I was kind of expecting Cissé to come on for Ba. But I guess it's a good learning opportunity for Ba to try not to get another yellow. And I think Semedo needed a rest for some reason. I don't know why. But, yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah, he did need a rest. He probably did need a rest. He was looking sluggish. Uh, Luis Fernandez has a nice little turn that made Masuras fall. It was really nice, but it results in a counterattack. And the ball gets kicked down the field to Fortunis. And Fortunis has this gorgeous first-time volley to... Put it in front of El Arabi as he's running down the field. And El, Ar El, Ar El Arabi messes it up by just kind of... He tries to make a pass across the box and just goes to the keeper or whatever. It's just not a good pass. And Vila seemed to be a calming presence for that back line of Ba and Cissé, Which is a rarely seen back line. Um, yeah. This note just says... More of Rafinha, Rafinha arguing. I feel like every time I look at Rafinha, I, realistically, like half the times I see Rafinha on the screen, the guy is arguing with somebody, the ref or some player or something. Like, just shut up and play football, man. 
in the Champions League, especially the whole time he's arguing. This guy, dude, you got a yellow card because you put your hand up. You put your hand up in front of your face to protect yourself from the ball. You're pro footballer. Stop arguing with everybody. You know, you're, someone's gonna give you a yellow card eventually, and then when you come off, you're gonna keep arguing. Jeez. Okay. All right. I'm done. I'm done complaining about Rafinha arguing. I like Rafinha too. I, I think he's a he's a quality player. Fortunis had a great delivery um, <laughs> from a set piece. And Cissé gets on the end of it, and he manages to kick it straight up in there. I don't know I don't know how he did it, but it just goes straight up. <laughs> anyway, uh, Asteras had this gorgeous build-up where Mvila gets nutmegged, and Luis Fernandez beats Cissé across the middle, and he try. You know how, like, he beats Cissé from the right side. He's coming across the goal. And a lot of players would like to hit it to the back post, curve it around the back post. He goes for a near post strike, like a straight on strike, and it was just wide, but it would have been the best team goal of of the season so far for sure. It was it was a really pretty build up. But he just cut it just cut it wide. And Envila earns a free kick, and guess who steps up and just caresses that ball right over the wall and under the bar and into the side netting. Costas, Fortunis, Costas, Fortunis. And he puts his hand up, hands up in respect for Asteras. Pure class from the man. And then the new signing, Riabshuk, comes on. Uh, and then the man of the match, Madi Kamara, gets this Gorgeous assist to Bruma. Man, that that was so beautiful. And Rapchuk looked good. He came on for a few minutes at the end. And it was a pretty entertaining game. I mean Asteras tried hard and they played well. There was it was pretty, but uh you know they just they just don't have that quality that Olympiakos has in the end. And Olympiakos played better anyway, but yeah, three set piece goals and then one non set piece goal at the end. I, it is true. I mean, I don't have to look at the stats to say. It seems as if Olivia Cos has way bigger players. That might have something to do with it. But I don't care. Those those goals were gorgeous today. But props to us, Dennis. So, uh, those are the games today. That's the wrap up. Olivia goes four, Asteras zero, and Apollon zero, Panathinaikos one, I Guan Panathinaikos zero, I L zero, Pazianina zero. I'll go over the whole table tomorrow for part two. I gotta do these rapid reviews. I can't do these tactical ones because school and work. It's just too much. I still have so much work to do after this. It's 12.30. And tomorrow I'm going out of town. So I'm going to be doing that on my Mac. I'm going to be doing that rapid review on my Mac. Rapid recap of my Mac. Which is going to be uh, a new experience. Because I'm still learning how to do it on my desktop. Um, I plan on doing a video about the mod that I use. It's from wehelos.gr. Go check it out because apparently no sport like Pez and FIFA have every single league except for the Greek league. It's ridiculous. But honestly, these guys did a great job on the mod. It's probably better than whatever job Pez and FIFA would have done. Uh, and then the next video I'm going to do is what I... Like, my favorite thing about every Super League team right now in the in the first division. And then I'm going to do a video, everything I dislike. Or, what, my least favorite thing about every team in the first division. And, yeah. Once we get to uh, the point where we don't have so many matches all the time, I'll do some... I'll do some better content for the recaps. And everybody on Reddit, thank you very much for watching or listening. 
this is more of a listening episode today. And everyone on Twitter, thank you. Go follow me. I have a Reddit, Football Thanasi, Twitter at Football Thanasi, and YouTube, Football Thanasi. Thank you very much for listening. I know it was a little, uh, a little crazy today, but I enjoy it. I, I just love Greek football, and um, hopefully you guys interact with me a little bit, so I'm not just talking to myself. But yeah, go hit me up on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and have a good one. I'll be posting another one tomorrow. All right, take care.